Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is Carrie at HolisticPsychic.com. It is time once again for another episode of Tarot for the Soul. So today we're taking a look at the energies happening for October 27th through November 2nd. As usual, we're going to start by looking into some of the astrological influences that are happening this week, and then we're going to get into messages that are coming through the cards. This week I'm going to be working with the Energy Oracle Cards by Sandra Ann Taylor. This is uh, <clears throat> what the box of the deck looks like. And this is going to be my maiden voyage with this deck. I've never used it before and today I felt inspired. I've had this deck for a while and just haven't used it yet, but it felt very fitting to use this deck because in looking at the imagery of the back of the card, it's got a lot of blues and some spherical energies, which are really reminding me of the full blue moon that we have coming up this Saturday, October 31st, which is of course Halloween, my favorite day of the year. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the blue moon signifies in addition to some of the other astrological aspects and then we'll get into things. So yeah, let's talk about this full blue moon that's happening this Saturday, October 31st. So a blue moon is the term that's used to describe when we have two full moons in any given month. And this can happen within a calendar month, which is how it's happening this year, or it can happen in an astrological month, which means there's two full moons happening within the same zodiac sign, which is even more rare than the calendrical blue moons, but even the calendar blue moons only happen about once every two and a half years. And it brings in some like extra illumination it heightens intuition, heightens energetic sensitivity. It can bring in heightened activity around your dream time. And when a blue moon happens, it can also bring in out of the ordinary or unusual possibilities and opportunities. So be aware of that as well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the specifics of the blue moon energy as we're getting into the reading for today. But the other thing that I want to mention is that we also have Mercury and Venus moving into Libra today as I'm recording this which is October 27th and so this brings a little bit of a focus back into the relationship sector of our life so with Venus and Mercury retrograde in Libra my take on this is that it's inspiring things having to do with how we're communicating within relationships but my sense is it's not only about interpersonal relationships. This week, we're all going to feel an innate inspiration to be a little bit more involved in contributing to our communities. So this can be our communities in regard to the community that we live in. It can be a community at large in regard to particular interests that you're involved in in your life. But with these aspects, the Mercury in Libra and Venus in Libra, it's really inspiring a desire to contribute. So it's not about what we're taking from our community. It's what do we want to bring to the table? What do we want to bring to the collective through positively contributing to our respective communities? And I love this energy. I feel really excited about the energies that we're having this week because it's a little bit of a reprise or a break from the challenging energies that we've been having really all year. This week with the full blue moon being in Taurus and the other aspects that are happening, we're finally going to feel like we can get some traction. We can recenter, reground, and get some forward movement going in the directions of what we're intending to manifest. In fact, the other thing that I want to remind you all of before we get into the cards is, so this is the second full moon that we have this month. The first one was October 1st, and then our second one is coming up. Remember the intentions that you set on the new moon a few weeks ago and this blue full moon that's happening on the 31st is a really empowering time to rededicate yourself to those intentions. Check in with yourself, notice whatever positive strides have been made or positive manifestations have happened already in regard to those intentions that you set for yourself. 
on the new moon cycle of this month and rededicate yourself. Maybe you need to tweak, refine a little bit, but let yourself re-energize those intentions. This full blue moon in Taurus brings awareness to what we are manifesting and how we're manifesting it. So it's not only about recalling your intentions, but asking yourself, how am I feeling guided to take action in regard to manifesting what my intentions are? This is a good week to ask yourself, what practical actions can I take that are in alignment with my goals connected to my higher calling? Remember, over the course of the past few weeks, we've been talking about how the energy is supporting us and raising into our higher calling. So this week, it's asking yourself, what practical steps can I take to support movement in the direction of that higher calling or manifestation in the direction of my higher calling? And again, with the Mercury retrograde and Venus both coming into Libra, to me, it feels like there's a little bit of an energetic theme developing around collaboration. This can be collaboration that we're doing with professional projects, creative projects. It can be collaborations that we're doing in just lending our energetic support with our friends, our families, and again, our respective communities. There feels to be this exciting energy around how we all want to be co-contributing to the betterment and the expansion of the collective. And doing that through collaborations is very fitting with the energies that are happening astrologically now. And then the very last thing that I want to talk a little bit about before we get into the cards is the Halloween energy. So the full blue moon is happening on Halloween and Halloween and the next few days after the Halloween, the Day of the Dead, All Saints Day, is like the main time of year that cultures in the world celebrate as being a time where we have a deeper access to the realm of spirit in general. Why is this though? This is mainly connected to where we're at in the wheel of the year. So about six or seven weeks ago, we had the fall equinox, and in about six or seven weeks from now, we're gonna have the winter solstice. So right now, the end of October, first part of November, is the halfway time in between those solstices and equinoxes, which marks a transition into literally the very darkest time of the year. From the fall equinox to the winter solstice, the days are progressively getting darker. The sun is setting earlier and we have more dark. So specifically from now, from the last week of October, first week of November, till the uh, winter solstice on December 21st, 22nd, is the very darkest time of the year. We're having less light and more dark in our days. It is very connected to tapping into the spiritual or the unseen aspects of reality, the mysteries in life. Um, so it's not just about connecting with our ancestors, but it's also connecting with your higher self, connecting with higher guidance, spirit guides, God, spirit, universe, cosmic consciousness, whatever you, you want to call it especially this week as we're coming into the full moon. It's a really good time to spend time in really affirming whatever your intentions are, not only for the rest of this year, but coming into 2021 as well. With that, let's go ahead and delve into whatever messages wanna come through the cards today. So this is not a tarot deck, but an oracle deck. Uh, we're looking at what's going on with the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine, hidden influences, things that are happening subconsciously that we're not seeing, any type of cautionary or challenge influences, and then the power energy that we can all tap into. So again, this is for the collective. This is messages regarding energies that are happening cosmically, that are influencing us all on a collective level. And then of course, we all have our own unique aspects of how the energy is showing up for us in our personal lives. Remember, if you would like to have a personal session, you can do that. All you have to do is reach out to me and we can set up an appointment for you. Also, if you have a favorite deck that you would like to see featured on a future episode of Tarot for the Soul, you can mail one to me and I will feature it. I will put my contact information in the description box below. Here we go. So I'm already shuffling the cards. I'm gonna just take a moment to tap in here. 
And so we're intending to gain clarity, insight, guidance, direction in regard to the energies that are happening collectively now and how we can all collectively utilize and harness the energies to support our journeys in spiritual awakening and empowerment. So tuning in. Okay, and I'm picking the cards now. And the first card we're gonna look at is representing the sacred masculine. It's what we're seeing in the world, how what's going on in the world of form, what energies are being presented to us, and how we're being guided to take action this week, collectively. And let me see what wants to come through here. I'm just letting the card be pulled intuitively. Okay, this card is the door to personal healing and happiness. It's related to the number 34, which is a seven. So in numerology, the number seven is connected to self-guided change fine-tunements and adjustments that refine our sense of alignment with that which gives meaning and purpose in our lives on personal and spiritual levels. So typically with the sevens, it's not huge catastrophic change, but more like a series of fine-tunements that are self-initiated and self-guided. So the door to personal healing and happiness showing up in the position that indicates the sacred masculine and how what we are perceiving in the world and what's being shown to us or the opportunity that's showing up in the realm of taking action i see this as being really aligned with this theme that's coming up around us being guided to shift into our higher calling the images on the card itself is depicting a doorway that's opening up into like another realm so the on the inside of the door is like a lush gardeny area and then as you're walking through the door there's a more vibrant reality appearing i'm seeing lotuses rising up from a pool of water i see a dove i see a rainbow in the sky sort of an expanded path opening up the sky itself is illuminated with a prism of rainbow colors this is saying that anything is possible right now the dove is inviting us to really shift into the energies of internal peace harmony within our own being it's also inviting us perhaps to prepare to make some decisions that will enable us to step through that gateway into manifesting more expanded senses of personal healing and happiness so look for signs in your personal reality how is the universe guiding you through signs in your waking reality that are supporting you in coming into deeper healing and fulfillment be aware be open be aware look for the signs or ask for the signs trust whatever signs and synchronicities are showing up for you and allow yourself to take action or prepare for taking action in alignment with whatever signs and synchronicities are showing up for you when the timing feels right for you. And the reason I say that is because we do still have those action planets, Mars and Mercury retrograde. So it really is more of a time of preparing for action than leaping into action, or the action we can take is gonna be more on the inward preparation levels. However, at least Mercury is going direct on November 3rd. So the energy is gonna start turning around and supporting us in being able to move forward and take action and express ourselves in ways that are connected to everything we're researching and reconsidering and preparing for now. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on on the inner planes, the sacred feminine. So let me just take a moment here to select that card. I feel like it wants to be this one. Okay. So the card that came up for the sacred feminine, what's going on on the inner planes is related to the number nine in this deck and it's called broken heart. This reminds me of the three of swords in a usual tarot deck, but as this relates to what's going on internally in regard to the sacred feminine, 
I would say that this is a time that's very conducive to doing inner healing work. And of course, when I'm looking at, you know, the reality of where we're at in the wheel of the year and the cycle of power that we're in right now, this sector of the year between the fall equinox and the winter solstice is the very best time of year to do healing work that is connected to like our deepest emotional wounds, our deepest traumas. Of course, we can do healing work any time of year, but this time of year is the most empowering time of year to do that type of work. When we do our healing work in alignment with the energies that are conducive to that, our efforts will produce the best results. Now, literally, I will recommend that for those of us who are feeling guided to do healing work, whether you're doing it in ceremonial ways, personal ritual ways, or you're working with a teacher or a therapist, the best healing work can be done in the time period from the full moon, which is October 31st, until we have the next new moon, which is gonna be like two weeks after that. And so maybe over these next few days, we can start having some consideration of where would I like to really delve into really getting to the root root of some of those old core traumas and wounds, and how can I do some healing work along those lines? This is a part of what's preparing us to rise into our higher calling is liberating ourselves from anything that's been holding us back in the realm of old wounds and traumas that haven't been healed or integrated yet. Now, there's another thing that I want to bring up before I get into the next card, like something that just came through uh, with what I just said about this healing energy is reminding me of a dynamic that's been showing up in the past week with clients that I've been seeing within my own practice. I've had more than several people reach out to me because of feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the intensities of the energies that are happening right now. So this is very aligned with what I just said earlier about this being a time of year where we can more deeply access the realm of spirit. So some of us who are really sensitive and intuitive energy and paths are already feeling that energy, but also in regard to this time of spiritual awakening that we've got going on right now, this year, I feel like there literally is on a subtle energy level, like a dimensional shift happening. Let me know in the comments if you're feeling that also, so we can like chat a little bit about that. I know that some of us are having some challenging times with feeling a little bit between realms and feeling like almost like our, maybe our, our, we're rising into levels of consciousness before other aspects are really ready to as far as our physical body and our emotional body goes. But this is something that's happening and the best way that we can harmoniously rise into this subtle energy, this subtle vibrational shift moving into this a higher octave of reality is to be as clean and clear as you can mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Eating, a, having a clean diet, minimizing anything that alters your perception or your mood as far as any types of substance use goes, obviously, and being in the energy of well-being as best as you can. So this heartbreak or this broken heart energy that's showing up is supporting us in clearing away anything that's holding us down. And this is very aligned with the reality that's happening around us all shifting into higher dimensional ways of being on the subtle energy levels. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into what are some hidden influences that are showing up on subconscious levels in the collective? I feel like it wants to be this. Healer of the Ages, which is connected to a 51, which is the number six in numerology. So six is love, balance, harmony. 
When I'm looking at Healer of the Ages, there's an image on this card that looks like an ascended master. It could be Jesus. It could be some other type of ascended master, teacher, spiritual guide. And as this is showing up in the position that indicates hidden or subconscious energies that are influencing the collective, obviously there's a huge theme coming up this week around healing because we have door to personal healing and happiness, we have broken heart, and we have healing of the ages. Now, to me, this says that we all have access to higher guidance that's supporting us in our healing journey. All we have to do is ask. Whatever highest vibrational spiritual guides, teachers, and helpers are supporting me in my own healing journey, are supporting me in healing through this specific emotional wound or this specific trauma, this is a good time for you to ask for divine assistance in regard to your healing processes, but it's also rising into your own empowerment within your ability to heal yourself. This is what I'm really getting on this. We all have the possibility to be our own healers. We all have access to every insight of every and every answer to every question that we would ever need to know all we have to do is tap into the aspects of our higher selves that contain that information or that awareness or insight or answer we all have the ability to be our own healer. We all have the ability to use our intuition to be guided in the direction of our own healing. Remember that we are never given a problem without also being given the solution, and we're never given a dream without also being given the abilities to bring that dream into fruition. So as I'm looking at the healer of the ages, you know, this is more than just personal healing. This is us rising up in the collective, in our empowerment, rising into our spiritual empowerment, rising into whatever our personal respective soul gifts are that we have to contribute to a more vibrant reality and moving forward for ourselves collectively. So what are your healing abilities? What do you feel are your specific soul gifts that you can utilize for yourself regarding your own healing journey? And how might you be able to utilize your soul gifts to support other people in their healing journeys? Okay, so now we're gonna look at anything that could be a cautionary energy or a challenge energy that's showing up for us to navigate through this week. Let's take a look. Goddess of the Moon, which is related to the number 52, which is also a seven. So, so far we have two sevens, so self-guided change. Goddess of the Moon reminds me of the Moon card in a traditional tarot, which is about trusting our instincts and our intuition. Now the moon also is connected to heightened emotional responses within us. So as this is showing up in the realm of what could be a challenge or cautionary energy, I would say that this is a good week to have mindfulness practices where you can really dial in a sharp discernment around the difference between having emotional responses to life situations and having intuitions that might come through your sensing and feeling body. So emotions are feeling responses that are connected to thoughts with circumstances that are showing up in our life, where our intuition also comes from a sensing feeling level but it's not necessarily like a triggered emotion, if you can understand what I mean. Now, also with this, I'm being reminded of an empowerment practice that we can do around emotions and feelings. So human emotions come and go, but we have the ability 
to be really cognizant around feeding the vibrational state of being that we choose to primarily embody regardless of fleeting emotions that might come and go. So with the full moon happening this week, we might be feeling a little bit more sensitive emotionally. We might be feeling a little bit more on edge emotionally, but we don't want to mistake that as being uh, intuitional guidance. Now, intuition that comes through sensing and feeling, the way that we can identify that and, and mark it as different than an emotional response is emotional responses usually are connected to like triggers and it, whether they're positive or challenging triggers, there's going to be more of an air of intensity and triggeredness around it where an intuition that comes from your sensing feeling body is just going to feel like a neutral piece of information that sits within you very comfortably as almost like a matter of factly knowing. So as we're moving forward into the week with the full moon, if you're feeling a little bit more sensitive emotionally, be mindful of what the emotion is, do some healing clearing work around that and use your intention to stay centered in how you're being intuitively guided to take action in regard to what your higher calling is since that is the bigger picture theme that's been showing up over the few weeks and it's kind of culminating this week with this full moon energy that we've got going on and with the Mercury and Venus moving into Libra. So the last card we're gonna look at today for this week in the collective is the power card. What's the power energy that we all have access to to support our journeys? So let me see what wants to come up here. Strategy, that makes sense. Okay. So it's assigned to a 21, which is a three in numerology, which is fruition, growth, uh, energy flowing forward in the direction of manifestation. So our power card, and this is also very fitting to this Mercury retrograde energy that we've got going on and the Mars retrograde energy that we still have going on. Again, now is the time to formulate plans, formulate ideas, formulate outlines, and literally formulating strategies. So really getting clear on precisely what you're intending for your action steps to be in your life, for yourself, in moving forward. And then again, we'll be on the journey of beginning to be able to implement those things more freely or more easily or effortlessly as we're moving into the November energies. The other thing I wanna say about this strategy card is that the primary colors within the card are oranges, reds, and golds. So all things connected to the lower chakras. So again, the red aspect is root chakra, preparing to take action in life, but we want the action that we're preparing to take to be connected with creative inspiration, which is connected to the second chakra and the orange colors that are showing up in this card. And then the golds, of course, are about the solar plexus chakra. Again, preparing to take action. It's about embodying enthusiasm, getting clear on the path we're choosing and preparing to take those first steps into this new journey. What we're doing now is preparing to establish a foundation of movement, however it's showing up for you in your personal life, in ways that are gonna get a little bit of a momentum happening. And that momentum um, is gonna be sort of like a, a, a slow burn type of momentum because we are in the winter, we're coming into the winter season right now. So all through fall and winter, the slow burn around getting forward movement going is enabling us to really sort of cultivate a strength of energy around it. And then as we're moving towards the end of winter and beginning of spring in 2021, which is going to be here before we know it, 
all of that energy is going to free up and we're going to feel like we can really make tremendous leaps and bounds into that higher octave, into that higher dimension of reality, into our higher calling. Now is the time to commit yourself to that path for yourself. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. So great connecting with all of you. And I will be chiming in as usual later this week with some additional sacred wisdom teachings that are aligned with the energies that are happening now. Thank you so much for your support. Love you all. Blessings. Namaste. And I'll see you in the next video.